Hi and a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247 whereby on a regular basis we discuss the current financial news around us. So let's get started but before that if you have still not downloaded the app you can do so by going on to the Google Play Store. So what are we going to discuss today? So basically there are two important news. The first talks about a report on the municipal finances that has been launched or introduced by Reserve Bank of India, the central bank of our country. And secondly, certain proposals that SEBI has introduced or has talked about for shareholders in order to pay taxes on any kind of buyback of shares and securities. So, in those news we discuss karte hai. So, let's get started with the very first news that is a report on municipal finances. Now, before starting with the report, let's ask first understand the municipal yeah, municipal corporation kya hota hai. Theek hai? Now, if we, if you have certain knowledge about history and quality, then you all must know that uh, Mahatma Gandhi talked about community service or having everything at the base level. So for that matter, the general government, if you refer to government, then the general government consists of three bodies. First is the central government, then we have the state government and then we also have the local government. Now, RBI had been since 1981 preparing reports for the finances and the fiscal performances of the central government and the state government since 1980. But because of lack of data and uh, lack of data and this being a bit informal in nature, RBI could not or any other institution have not been preparing any kind of statistical data or report on the functioning or the fiscal performances of municipal corporation or the Panchayati Raj institutions. And this is the reason why in order to fulfill the gap so that we have a kind of statistics for the municipal corporations as well and the Panchayati Raj institutions as well, RBI for the very first time has issued and released the report on municipal finances where it talked about certain uh, reasons why the municipal the municipality is not being able to get the sufficient funds so that the root level or the community based development could have been done in a much better way to un cheezon ko bataya hai plus the report also talks about certain kind of alternative sources of financing for the municipal corporation Rather than going for loans and borrowings from banks and other financial institutions, RBI has talked about having certain kind of alternative financing and we are going to look at what this alternative financing is all about and thus the report talks about or says that through this report they are trying to explore this, the alternative sources of financing for municipal corporation as the very theme of this report on municipal finances. I hope you have basic background of municipal corporation and this report ke reason why it Now since it has been issued or released for the very first time, RBI hopes and intends that this is going to be a regular annual publication. So, this report annually of RBI release So, this becomes very important from her exam perspective because for the very first time this has been introduced. So, exam may is the question of expect kar sakte ho. Moreover, there is so much to it. I am just a basic understanding ke liye bata rahi hu, But there can be questions in the essay or English descriptive maybe it pe aap se poocha ja sakta hai. So, this topic becomes important for your exam. Theek hai? So let's move forward and let us understand what all were highlighted in the report. So in this very report, RBI talked about infrastructure of these urban local bodies and the municipal corporation. Then it also talked about how these municipal corporation lack financial autonomy and whereby all the funds that these municipal corporation gets all gets utilized in making for the revenue related expenditure and therefore there is minimal capital expenditure by the municipal corporations and apart from that it also talked about municipal 
bonds where the it says that the intent or the intention behind raising this municipal bonds was to provide a platform or a credit platform to the municipal bodies but that has not been happened because there was an absence of a well developed market for the municipal bonds so talking about the uh, talking about for the very first key highlight that is poor working of the municipal corporation now we talk about the panchayati raj institutions and the municipal corporation the urban local bodies now this has been enacted under the 1973 act 1973 mein jab constitution ki amendment ki gayi thi tab isko laya gaya tha and this are also a part of your directive principles theek hai ye aapki fundamental rights ke liye nahi aati but it comes under your directive principles dpcs यहाँ पे ये बताया है गया है दैट दिस म्यूनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन हाउ डू दे डिराइव फंड्स तो इनको जो फंड्स मिलता है दैट इज फ्रॉम द डिवल्यूशन ऑफ द टैक्सेस एंड ग्रांट्स दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट रिसीव तो जो भी फंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट या स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के पास आती है उसका डिवल्यूशन किया जाता है एज पर वॉट द फाइनेंस कमीशन से राइट तो उस जब जब उसको डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया जाता है बिटवीन द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड द लोकल बॉडीज इट इज द मेजर सोर्स ऑफ फाइनेंस फॉर दी म्यूनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन कोई भी टैक्सेस हुआ वो सारा पैसा किसके पास जाता है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के पास जाता है अब सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट उस पैसे से जितने भी टैक्सेस से रेवेन्यू आया है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के पास ऑल दो मनी दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज रिसीव थ्रू टैक्सेस will be distributed to the state government of the state government say the local bodies ko di jati hai now this money is very limited in nature and that's the reason why we see that these municipal corporation face lack of financial autonomy because every time every time they need funds or every time they want to take up certain projects they will first have to talk to the central government and the state government and if we talk and if we compare the status of the budget that these municipal corporation receives in india then it is very less as compared to other countries as compared to other countries across the world agar aap south asian uh, south asian countries mein bhi dekhoge india mein jo municipal budget hai that is very small theek hai and it is mainly dominated by the property tax collections local taxes jo municipal bodies are allowed to collect wo hoti hai second the taxes that is distributed by the central and the state government for any kind of grants received from the central and the state government and there's a reason why since they are dependent on the central and state government majorly they lack financial autonomy and since they lack financial autonomy they are also uh, performing very poorly and how do we say this for the simple reason that the growth of urbanization is there the the rate by which we have seen the growth of urbanization specifically in the urban local bodies there is a disproportionate in the number of infrastructure urban infrastructure that could have been created abhi bhi rural areas kaafi zyada hai urban infrastructure infrastructure in the form of proper highways proper transportation and communication infrastructure these are not as the number as the rapid growth of, of urbanization has been done in india so therefore there is poor working of the municipal corporation they could not develop the roads that they have roads are abhi bhi dekh lo rural india mein itne develop nahi hai right so ye inki failure hai inki poor working ko darshata hai then talk about the minimal capital expenditure as i have said jo bhi inke paas paisa aata hai that goes on in the form of establishment expenses any kind of establishment that they are making or administrative charges paying money to the gram panchayat ya fir to the sarpanch so wahan pe sare paise chale jate hain ya agar koi loan liya hua hai unhone to uske interest and financial charges wahan pe karte hain and therefore the uh interest and operational charges itne zyada hai that they are left with not sufficient fund and that's the reason why the number or the capital expenditure done by the municipal corporation is minimal or jab tak capital expenditure nahi hogi these uh, working of the municipal corporation could not be done and there cannot be there cannot be an increase in the number of urban infrastructure that is required for any society and lastly 
as I have talked about, it is the absence of a well-developed municipal board. Jaisi, as I have mentioned, municipal corporation mostly rely on borrowings from banks and other financial institutions, but they do not, but this municipal bonds are not well established, not well developed, and people are less lucrative in order to subscribe to the bonds issued by the municipal corporation. Okay, so this is all that was highlighted in the report. Now let's talk about the suggestions. Suggestions ke baat kare, tumho ne yehi bola hai that there should be a sound and transparent system so that uh, the accounting, the accounting of the finances that these municipal corporations receives could be monitored, could be analyzed. Ki kitna paisa administrative, administrative cost mein ja raha hai. How those money could be minimized and used for capital expenditure. And therefore they have talked about adopting a sound and transparent accounting practices. In this case, they have also talked about alternative financing mechanism, whereby they have said that these municipal corporations should explore different innovative bond and land-based financing mechanisms to augment their resources, to increase the funds available with them. And if we talk about uh, if we talk about what else was mentioned, then RBI in its very report on municipal finances also talked about pooled financing. Where it says that though um, bond financing, using bonds as a source of finance has been very much prevalent, but there is a lot of cost involved. Jabhi bhi, koi bhi, suppose a municipal corporation, a gaon, a village, agar koi bond issue karta hai, then they or that municipal corporation will have to bear the exorbitant rate because these are uh, these the issuance prices or the issuance cost is too much but if they come together if they pool their resources and together if they issue any kind of bond then they will be able to save on the issuance charges and this is what is known as pool financing pool financing kya hoti hai under this a common bond will be issued. Teen char districts, teen char districts ke municipal corporation ke liye ek saath issue hoga and that pool of resources could be distributed among these three, four districts so that they can use it and any proceeds that they receive could be made use in order to make payment to the bond holders. Simple, moving forward. Talking about pool financing. So pool financing kaise hoga? How are these municipal corporations going to raise finance using pool financing? Bond issue kaise hogi? So here the pool financing essentially involves creating a kind of special purpose vehicle or a trust. So if trustee create kiye jayegi and this trustee will be responsible with the operation and supervision of the money uh, of the bonds to be issued and any kind of money received. So, this Sara Kam ye trustee karegi, right? So, this trustee will be known as state pooled finance entity. So, pooled financing will essentially involve creating a trustee by the name state pooled finance entity. And this will be registered either as a trust or a special purpose vehicle. Now, the owners or the liability to issue the bonds will now lie on this trustee that is SPFE and this trustee will be responsible for first issuing the bonds, issue kar dege bonds ko and since and after the expiry of the period for which the bonds were issued, repayment of the loan. Jis ko hum technical word mein bolte hai, debt servicing whereby debt servicing involves making full payment of your obligations, of your liabilities. And what will be the liability in case of a bond? It will be the principal repayment, the principal amount that the bond holders has given plus the interest payment on this bonds. So this is known as debt servicing. Okay, now what is going to be the probable benefit? As you all know, synergy create if a loan a person goes to raise finance or raise bonds, so bohat sara paisa involved hoga. But if five or six people come together and together if they issue the bonds, then the cost for each individual local body will go down. So this is the benefit that will be created because of pooled financing whereby the creation of this trust 
Prakti will ensure a lower cost of bond issuance for each individual local body and will also at the same time enhance the credit worthiness of the bond issue. So, jo bhi bond issue hoga, uski credit worthiness bad jayegi because five six districts or five six corporations, municipal corporations together as are involved in raising this bond and therefore it will provide a hedging facility to the hedging and therefore the risk will be hedged because now the risk will be distributed among the participating municipal corporations. As I mean that this is for the first time that the pooled financing will be applicable in India. It has been done earlier as well. It was prevalent in states like Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu wherever they have made use of the pooled financing in order to pool revenue in order to make up for their investments, project investments. Now, in order to support pool financing, central government has also in, introduced a scheme known as pool finance development fund. So this again, the scheme becomes important for you. And this scheme was launched in the year 2026. The objective was to provide credit enhancement to the urban local bodies state level pooled finance mechanism whereby on a state level money will be pooled together so several municipal corporations can come together and pool money in order to uh, in order to make up for any kind of projects that they want to undertake apart from that apart from that that we launched for the 2006 May, the government also provided tax exemption so suppose if certain kinds of municipal bond is uh, issued by the municipal corporation under the state pool finance entity and if as a bond holder i am subscribing to that bond then during that time i was given certain exemptions certain income tax exemptions were granted to the bond holders so that they subscribe to such kinds of bonds okay subscription mostly is for exemptions income tax exemptions this is not applicable. I hope pool financing is also clear to you. It will be much clearer with this diagram whereby it says investors like we, like you and I can invest. So we are the investors. We will provide them with the money. So money will be provided and in return we will be getting the municipal bonds. So the certificates will be Similar as the way the ventures are issued. Okay? Now this money is will be known as a pooled fund and the money, whatever money we have got, suppose 90 crores rupees have raised here through this uh, pooled financing system. Now this 90 crores will be divided among the urban local bodies. Suppose three urban local bodies and each will be getting 30 crores. 30 crores uh, will be utilized by each of these urban local bodies any certain kind of projects. So, if other roads banane hai, ya phir highways mein, kuch kahin bhi bhi lagane hai, parks are up karna hai, all will be done separately by each of these urban local bodies. So, inko kya fayda ho gaya? Agar hi individually karte, bond issuance price akele jelna padta hai, here it is pooled together. And now, whatever proceeds or cash flow that they receive through this project will be deposited in a pooled fund account. So, which is nothing but a third party here. As I have mentioned, this entire pool financing will be a trustee based special purpose vehicle. Okay? So, this trustee will be keeping all the proceeds, all the cash flows that this will be depositing with them. So, the bond issuance will be done by the trustee plus this debt servicing. Debt servicing to the investors after the expiry of the bond period will be done through this account. Simple. Moving forward to the next news that is SEBI's proposal to tax shareholders in case of uh, buyback of shares. So, what is the news? The news says that SEBI, in a report or in a consultation paper, said that the system of taxing buybacks in the hands of companies unfairly burdens shareholders that choose not to tender their shares. So as of now, whenever buyback of share happens, what is buyback of shares? When the company tries to 
repurchase the shares that it has sold to the shareholders company wapas lene ki koshish kar rahi hai so usually jo bhi current market price hota hai company mein usse higher price pe hi company repurchase kar leti hai apne shares from the shareholders right so this is not as buyback of shares now whenever this buyback of uh, buyback of shares is done who pays the taxes so in case of buyback of shares as of now the company who is buying who is uh, buying back the shares had to pay the taxes agar suppose me company ko mujhe taxes pay karne hain to jinhone kharida jinhone buy back kiya unka to fayda ho gaya unko extra premium price mil gayi because current market prices zyada pe they are selling the shares to the company but for the company and this, and the prevalent shareholders we won't need buy back nahi kari hai the person the shareholders who have not sold their shares back to the company will suffer because uh, the company has now to pay taxes and this will result in lower profits or earning for the company and lower profits and earnings will be uh, will be a burden for all the shareholders in what yahi pe wahi cheez likha hai that this unfairly burdens the shareholders that to not to tender their shares that is the to not to sell off their shares to the company so therefore in order to provide justice to these shareholders sebi has now proposed that in the event of buyback of shares it is the shareholder who is selling off its shares needs to pay the taxes on buyback of shares rather than the company so yahi isme bataya gaya hai this is the proposal and let's see what decision the sebi takes on this and apart from that sebi has also proposed that it is going uh, proposed changes in the size of buyback kitna percentage humko buyback karna hai the time period for which this open market buybacks will be applicable and thirdly the use of the funds uh, through the buyback the buyback ke through jo bhi funds aayega uska karna kya hai theek hai now before understanding or aage badhne se pehle let us first understand ki open market buybacks kya hote hain so this is all about buyback of shares meaning aap sabko clear hai whenever the uh, company buy back or repurchases its own shares from the shareholders is known as buyback of shares usually this is done at a higher price than the current market price now buyback can happen in two ways the first is tender offer the second is open market offer tender offer mein kya hota hai the company decides a offer price ek offer price pehle se decide decided hoti hai right so there is a fixed particular fixed price at which the company will be buying back its shares from the shareholders and that is known as the tender offer now under the open market offer here the company buy buys back its share at different rates from different seller to yahan pe kya hota hai the company actively buys from the seller on the exchange exchange pe different seller se different rate pe buy karti hai and there is a period involved at least one month period hoti hai jiske beech mein company buy back karti rehti hai apne shares from the shareholders and this period is elongated because uh, because or so that there is no significant price movement due to, due to the buying activity ठीक है तो ये होता है ओपन मार्केट ऑफर जहां पे एक दो महीने के लिए ओपनली छोड़ दिया जाता है सो दैट एनी शेयर होल्डर हु वांट्स टू सेल बैक द शेयर्स एंड इफ द कंपनी वांट्स टू बाय कैन हैपन ओवर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड यहां पे फिक्स प्राइस होती है यहां पे प्राइस फिक्स नहीं होती दिस इज द ओनली डिफरेंस बिटवीन ओपन मार्केट ऑफर एंड टेंडर ऑफर ठीक है तो ये हमने पढ़ लिया कि सेबी इज आल्सो प्रपोजिंग चेंजेस इन द साइज Size of the buyback and also funds utilized funds for open market buybacks. आगे देखते हैं. Next thing, SEBI has also proposed a gliding path with respect to the reduction in the maximum limit and the time period for a buyback offer through the open market. Now gliding path क्या होता है? Not all at once. ऐसा नहीं कि आज रूल लाया और आज ही पूरा खत्म हो जाए. Over a period, right? ट्रांजिशन पीरियड ट्रांजिशन के थ्रू थोड़ा थोड़ा करके चेंजेस लाना है वॉट इज द चेंजेस द अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव इज दैट सेवी वन टू डन अवे विद द टाइम पीरियड इन्वॉल्व इन ओपन मार्केट ऑफर ओपन मार्केट ऑफर में मैंने जिसे बताया 
यूजली वन मंथ का गैप होता है उसको वो जीरो करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं they want to close down the open market offer what is the gliding path so according to sebi the time period for buyback process under the open market uh, open market could be reduced to 66 working days from april 2023 april 2023 66 working days ke andar hi buyback karna hai next it should be reduced to 22 working days from april 2024 जब 66 वर्किंग डेज तक लेकर आ जाएंगे उसके बाद उसको 22 वर्किंग डेज तक लाएंगे एंड फाइनली द ओपन मार्केट ऑप्शन शुड बी क्लोज डाउन फॉर बायबैक ऑफर्स फ्रॉम अप्रैल 2025 दैट इज आफ्टर अप्रैल 2025 वी विल जस्ट हैव वन वे ऑफ बायबैक ऑफ शेयर्स दैट इज द टेंडर ऑफर सो दिस इज द प्रपोजल दैट सेबी हैज ब्रॉट फॉरवर्ड एंड ऑन दिस प्रपोजल सेबी इज आस्किंग फॉर कमेंट्स एंड कंसल्टेशंस फ्रॉम वेरियस स्टेक होल्डर्स ठीक है नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द क्वेश्चंस फॉर टुडे द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेज विद रेफरेंस टू द रिपोर्ट ऑन म्युनिसिपल फाइनेंसेस वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट्स द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सेज दिस रिपोर्ट हैज बीन पब्लिश्ड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट नाउ यू नीड टू वॉच आउट ये रिपोर्ट किसने पब्लिश करी है सेकंड द थीम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट वाज अल्टरनेटिव सोर्सेस ऑफ फाइनेंसिंग फॉर म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन एंड थर्ड due to the absence of consolidated data on local governments this report was published with the objective of making it a regular annual publication you need to identify the correct answers in the comment section moving forward to the next question which says which of the following is not a key highlight of the report on municipal finances jo highlights humne dekhe the usi ke bare mein pucha hai first it says financial autonomy enjoyed by the municipal corporation second poor working of municipal corporations and third presence of a well developed market for municipal funds you need to identify which of the following is not a key highlight of the very report moving forward to third question here again we need to identify the correct statements right the true statements out of these three the first statement says Uh, this pooled finance development fund scheme was launched by the municipal corporations second it was launched in the year 2016 and third the objective of the scheme is to provide credit enhancement to the urban local bodies through a state level pooled finance mechanism so you need to identify the correct statements out of this five option and this was all that i wanted to discuss with you the answers are also provided in this pdf in case if you need any other uh, help or if you have any doubt then you can write it down in the comment section also answer please answer to this question in the comment section so that you under, understand it well and remember it for a longer period till then take care and bye bye